Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. On today's show, I've, I've got to quote Shakespeare. To sell or not to sell. Okay, maybe that's not exactly how Shakespeare wrote it. But in today's economic conditions, with the housing market being in a kind of an interesting place, even though we're in this coronavirus stuff, to sell or not to sell, that's the question. And we're going to talk about that today. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get into some of the reasons why you might decide to sell one of your rental properties. Now, I'm going to stay in the single family space. I'm not going to get into the multifamily space because that, to be honest with you, that get very, very complicated. And I, I'm trying to convey to you information that I think that you can use in today's markets. So let's let's get into it. Let's talk about the reasons why you might want to sell your investment property. You know, I think the the primary reason for you to sell your investment house is because you had originally planned to sell that property. Yeah. You know, one of the biggest mistakes a real estate investor can make is not to develop a plan for how they want to invest in real estate. I'll tell you what, that's, that's, if that's not the number one mistake, it's definitely in the top three. Impatience often leads to mistakes also, you know, cause sometimes you get all worked up. Hey, I just, I gotta go, I gotta go get a property. I have to set it. I'm going to get a property. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to be a real estate investor. I'm going to go buy a property. So you jump right into the market. Well, the problem without planning is that you may make the mistake of never knowing if you're on track, off track, or, or when you might need to make adjustments to your, your game plan. The most successful investors are the ones who make a plan before they start. They follow that plan. They make those periodic adjustments along the way. That includes selling a perfectly good asset that may be performing exactly as expected, or maybe even better than you expected. And maybe your plan was to make certain moves at a certain time frame or during certain market conditions. And that can include both holding your properties forever or selling properties when everyone out there thinks you're absolutely nuts to do it. Remember, it's your plan and it's your plan for your reasons. So that's a good reason. Another reason you should consider selling your investment house is that the property is consistently generating negative cash flow. What I mean by negative cash flow is that you're, you're basically paying money out of your pocket every month to keep that property afloat. Now, some of you who own rental homes may have bought those investment properties based solely on the potential for the property to appreciate in price. There, there are a lot of you out there on the, the, what I like to call the left coast, you know, California, Seattle. Um, well, Seattle's not a state, it's a city, but you know what I'm talking about? You know, your plan was to endure any negative cash flow while betting on the fact that that property has potential to appreciate. And, you know, maybe you're just tired of paying money out of your pocket every month so that your resident can live in an area that, well, might be rent controlled or possibly an area that just doesn't command the amount of rent necessary to support the leverage you've placed on that property. 
You know, in places where property values are high, sometimes it is very, not sometimes, usually it is very difficult to generate a lot of net rental income. For example, if a rental income for a house works out to be about, let's say, $20,000 a year on a property that might be worth a million bucks, it might be time for you to consider selling that property. You know, take the profits out. Go ahead and do something else. In other cases, you may have bought a property and placed a resident in there without first making sure that all of the systems had a sustainable lifespan of three to five years. And as a result, you're experiencing negative cash flow because those systems are starting to break down. Yeah, I mean, that's one of our business rules that, that we have at Lifestyles Unlimited is that when we go into a property, we inspect everything. We look at everything. We determine what the serviceable life for all of the components of that home are. And, you know, if it has the potential to break down in the next three to five years, we fix or replace it. And it works well for us. So when you're developing your real estate investment goals and strategies, you should avoid purchasing properties that have the potential to put you into a negative cash flow situation. Yeah, I'm just going to be very upfront and clear with you. You know, consistent negative cash flow is really a top reason for you to sell your investment property. I mean, after all, it's not generating income from you for you. So therefore, in our playbook, it's not worth keeping. It is probably a good time for you to sit back and say to yourself, this ain't working. It's not working the way it needs to. Because what we believe is that properties must provide positive passive income because it is that accumulation of all the passive income that comes off of those rental properties that once you exceed, meet or exceed, I should say, your normal household expenses, that's our definition for retirement. When we come back from the break, I've got more reasons why you might want to sell your investment house. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. So we're talking about reasons why you might want to sell your investment property. And more specifically, I'm talking about your houses. Yeah. The houses. I'm not going to get into multifamily. Um, I, I could, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to stay focused on single family houses because I think that many of you out there who are not invested in real estate have a better familiar, if I can't say that word, are more familiar, that's a better way to say it, are more familiar with the housing market as it relates to single family homes. You know, I think if we get into some of those, the multifamily stuff, uh, I might kind of lose you and I don't want to do that. And I'm not putting you down. I am not putting you down. I'm just saying, I think it's just easier for you to wrap your head around it. Now, for those of you out there that are real estate investors that do own rental properties, you probably own single family houses because a lot of people that get started into real estate investing do so with single family houses. Yeah, they're, they're, they're easier to deal with than say a hundred unit apartment complex. And to be honest with you, if you're going to get involved with investing in multifamily apartment communities, you really need to have a solid education before you venture into that area. Uh, I'll be honest with you. You need to have a solid education before you venture into 
any type of real estate investment. That's that's my experience because I'll I'll be the first to tell you I bought real estate without a proper education. Yeah, I did. And it didn't work out so well for me. But once I received a proper education, once I became a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, I'll tell you what, everything changed and it all changed for the better. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about reasons why you might consider selling your rental home. So let me give you another one. Maybe you're better off investing in a different location. You might have discovered another market that has very strong growth potential and potentially better returns for the money that you invest. Part of the planning process is to review your current investments and to consider other options. Remember, this is all about your personal strategy and deciding what you want to do with your investments. And it's totally fine to diversify your investment por- portfolio geographically. Yeah, totally fine to do that. I mean, you might, let's say you have properties in Houston and you know, you're, you're looking at the Dallas market. Maybe you're seeing that the Dallas market has different economic indicators that are are telling you that's the place you need to go. So maybe you consider selling your property in Houston and then you reinvest the money in Dallas, or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe, maybe you have property in Dallas and you know, you're, you're thinking the properties are doing well there, but you're maybe considering that the price point to get into future properties is higher in Dallas and you may be able to get more value for your money in Houston. So you choose to sell the Dallas property and buy properties in Houston. Yeah. Remember it's, it's your strategy. It's your goals and objectives. These are the goals and objectives that you put together after you get yourself properly educated You get yourself a mentor and you move forward and it doesn't hurt to start building your investment team around you, regardless of where you choose to invest. Now, some of the members of your team are are location specific. I get that. I mean, you're not going to have a general contractor who is in Dallas necessarily do work for you in Houston. Unless, of course, that general contractor is equipped to do that type of thing. There, There are general contractors out there that can do that. But let me dial it back and let's get into some more of these things that you may consider when you're considering selling your investment property. Maybe you want to grow your real estate business. You know, another possible reason for selling your investment property is to free up capital. Maybe you want to expand your real estate investment business and buy more distressed properties that you can then rebuild into cash flowing machines. Or maybe it's time for you to step into the world of owning and operating apartment communities. Yeah. I mean, these, these are realistic options. You know, when you buy your investment property correctly, if you do it the way that we show you how to do it, you will capture equity going into the deal. That's right. In other words, you're going to have wealth that is built into that property. And when you capture that equity, that equity remains in the property until you sell or refinance the property. Yeah. And, you know, let's say, let's say you decide to sell a property that, I don't know, maybe it's worth $200,000 today. Maybe you were able to acquire it and fix it up for about $125,000. And you potentially have, let's just say you've got a hundred thousand dollars of equity in that particular property as of today, maybe you want to sell that property, take that hundred thousand dollars out of that property. And then with that hundred thousand dollars, maybe go out and buy distressed properties. And maybe you can pick up those properties. And and if you do it the way that we show you, you 
can potentially pick up four, possibly five properties because you're able to use hard money assets correctly and buy distressed properties. And in doing so, you're able to, well, basically multiply your portfolio. Yeah, you turn one into five. Kind of cool, isn't it? Maybe your investment priorities have shifted. You know, in any case, priorities and strategies do change over the time. You know, we, we tend to continue learning. We get better at what we're doing and we change as individuals. And because of that, our portfolios have a tendency to also change. No matter the reason for selling, what's important is being decisive when you know you need to sell. If, if you want results, you have to be proactive. If you know that you want or excuse me, if you know what you want for your financial future, you should reach out for it and you should pursue it. If what you're doing isn't working, then just shift gears and do something a little bit differently. It's totally fine. You know, I've got a lot of people at Lifestyles Unlimited that I've met over my three years as a member that are investing differently today than they did when they became members of Lifestyles Unlimited. It's just part of the natural progression of the real estate investor. Yeah, and it's really cool to watch it happen over time. When we come back from the break, I've got another thing for you to consider, and then we're going to actually get into the fundamentals of what you must do if you choose to sell. Back after this. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. So on today's show, we've been talking about when it's time or when it's appropriate for you to sell an investment house. And I've given you some ideas as to what could trigger that event. Now, one other thing I want to bring up is what's going on in the current marketplace. I think it's important for you to understand that because having that knowledge may trigger something in your planning process that dictates that it's time for you to sell a particular property. You know, there's, there's low inventory and there's high demand and that is creating a situation that's driving home prices up. There are people out there that are looking to buy homes for their personal residence, and there is a shortage of properties on the market at entry level price points. I mean, I, I could get into the whole concept of the fact that because of coronavirus, you know, people weren't putting their properties up for sale because of all the unsurety out there. They didn't want to leave a particular property. And as a result of that, the inventory has been depressed. It really has. And, you know, it's, it's that supply and demand curve that we learned about in college. And, you know, it is pushing properties up. Another thing that you need to understand is that there are very few new home builders out there that are building homes at what is considered an entry level price point. So the, the only option for many people wanting to purchase a home is to take advantage of record low interest rates that are available to them and to buy from investors that are putting their rental homes on the market for sale. Now, of course, you do that after the residence lease has ended and they vacate the property because you can't sell a property to somebody who chooses to reside in that property if there is a valid lease in place. But remember, there is nothing wrong with taking profits in the current market. So let's, let's say you've made the decision. It is, it is time for you to sell a property. So let's talk about some of the things that you need to consider when selling a property. And I think it's very important 
that you put yourself in a position where you make the first offer work on the property that you're choosing to sell because statistically it helps you to maximize your prop profit. But again, before you put your property up for sale, make sure you have a solid plan to make that first offer on your property work. So let's say your tenant has moved out and you've, you've had your contractor go in and do the make ready. And as usual, that contractor does an amazing job and your property is ready to go on the market. Now you're ready to work with a realtor to sell your property. Keep in mind, a good realtor will do several things for you. One is they will confirm a selling price for your property that is appropriate for the sub market that your property is in accurately reflects the condition of the property attracts several interested buyers and results in a full price offer or higher. That realtor will also negotiate on your behalf with the buyer or the buyer's agent, and they will keep the deal on track to get it closed when it's supposed to close. So let's, let's consider the following scenario. You ready? You decide to list your property with a realtor who's member of your team, by the way, who posts the listing on the multiple listing service, let's say on a Thursday afternoon. Now this is strategic. This is strategic. And the reason they do that is to attract the most buyers for the coming weekend, because that's when a lot of people that are in the market to buy homes for their personal residences have the time to go out and look at properties. And let's say you get three showings on a Friday and maybe four more the following Saturday. Now you realize this number of showings, which is a key indicator of having your property priced correctly, indicates that you've done a good job. On Sunday, your realtor informs you that you have two offers. One is a lowball offer that you reject. The other offer, however, is a full price offer for let's say $200,000 with no concessions. Your realtor verifies that the buyer is approved for financing, is putting 20% down on the property. They have put 1% of the purchase price forward as earnest money, and they are offering a $200 option fee to give them seven days to do inspections. Pretty clean offer. So you accept the offer, and now you're officially under contract. This is a good thing. So the next thing that happens is the option period starts and the inspection is completed in a couple of days. Your realtor receives a copy of the inspection report along with a list of the requested repairs from the buyer or the buyer's realtor. You discover that the electrical panel is faulty and the inspector has flagged it as a known fire hazard. In addition, the hot water heater needs a new overflow pan. The roof has hail damage and there are several small items listed on the report that were, you know, not a part of the code requirements when the house was originally built. And here's the crazy thing. The buyer is getting nervous. Remember your property will become their first home and they're requesting that everything be repaired or replaced. So what do you do? I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking there is no way I'm going to agree to this. I just spent $45,000 on this house two years ago and another $500 to get it make ready. I am not spending another dime on this property because it's worth my asking price. Look, I understand the emotions and, and I don't necessarily disagree. The issue really is about achieving your selling strategy and maximizing your profits. You know, the scenario that I gave you is just one example of the value of having an experienced realtor on your team. Your realtor will negotiate with the buyer or the buyer's agent on your behalf. This keeps emotions in check and it focuses everyone on a solution that will work for both you and the buyer. Now think about it. If you were representing yourself in this transaction, you run the risk of getting emotionally involved in the sale, potentially becoming defensive and maybe losing your composure. 
You could lose your temper or get frustrated with this first time buyer or their agent and say something detrimental to the sale or refuse to negotiate thinking something along the lines of who cares about this offer? Uh, there are, there are more buyers out there and this is a hot market. I'm telling them no to everything. <laughs> well, let me be very clear with you here. That approach is a big mistake. Some investors make when they try to sell their property on their own. Now you want to know why? Okay. Let me give you, let me give you the facts. First of all, statistically, your first offer is the best one you're going to get. You have given the property maximum market exposure. You've had several show, showings and you received at least one offer from qualified buyers. And remember, this is a negotiation. Just because the buyer asked you to repair or replace these inspection items doesn't mean they're being difficult. This is just part of the negotiation process. And if the big items on the buyer's list, you know, like the faulty electrical panel or the damaged roof, you know, due to hail damage are not addressed, you're going to have a similar response from the next buyer that you encounter. Yeah, that's true. And there are, there are other reasons why it's good to have an experienced realtor on your team. Now, some of you in the back of your mind thinking, well, you know, those commissions, they don't, they don't earn their money. I'm here to tell you, they do earn their money. Um, I always used a highly experienced realtor when I sell my properties. And I do it for these reasons and the reasons I'm going to address when we come back from the break. Here's Lifestyles Unlimited founder and CEO, self-made multimillionaire and national radio host, Del Wamsley, on the effective way to run a business. There are people that run their businesses on a shoestring. If you own an apartment complex and you have no cash, that's not a very effective way to run a business. My businesses, each and every one of them, have cash savings. In other words, we can make no money or make very little money. We'd still survive. For those of you that haven't thought it through that far and you don't have any cash savings, let's get you in here and get you educated on how to save what you already own. The mom and pop businesses are going to take a major hit. If you've been running your business that way, you need to get into Lifestyles right now and learn how to operate your business the right way. Lifestyles Unlimited has been helping people succeed since 1990. Join us for our free online real estate workshop and learn the seven principles we teach to run our businesses and provide for our families. Register at LifestylesUnlimitedWorkshop.com. with the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Welcome back to the show. So we're talking about, well, let me just recap for you. In the earlier part of the show, I talked about some of the reasons why you might want to consider selling your investment property. And there's, there's a bunch of reasons that I pointed out. Now, I don't intend for that to be the all-inclusive list. You may have additional reasons that make sense to you. I'm just pointing out some things that, you know, to be honest with you, based on the fact that you have a qualified plan, in other words, you have a plan to invest in property, that along the way, there are certain things that could occur that could trigger that plan. I mean, maybe maybe the plan was all along that at a certain time point you were going to sell. Maybe, maybe, maybe you've got a property that, you know, has got negative cash flow, or, you know, because some things, because you didn't prepare the property correctly when you bought the property, you've got systems that are breaking down. And as a result of all the repairs that you're making on the property, you're having negative cash flow. Um, I mean, that's just another reason. Maybe you're better off investing someplace else. Maybe you want to move your money into a different market. Maybe you just want to grow your real estate business. Maybe your priorities have shifted, you know, or maybe just because there is a strong seller's market out there, this is the time for you to pull the trigger and act. So I got into a scenario where we said, okay, Let's pull the trigger. Let's act. Let's sell. So I was, I was talking through what you should do 
to get your property on the market and to stimulate the best exposure possible and to receive the most qualified offers that you can receive on that property. And before we went to the break, I was talking about some of the reasons why I believe you should use a highly qualified real estate agent. Yeah. I mean, there's now some of you have in the back of your mind, I don't need a real estate agent. You know, they, they charge crazy commissions and they don't do anything. Well, I think that's a bunch of hogwash to be honest with you. Um, I've got a lot of experience selling properties and every time that I have sold one, whether it's my personal residence, whether it's investment property, I've always used a realtor. And because I've selected, in my opinion, the best ones out there, I get great market exposure. I get great offers that come in on my properties. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's ever been a time I haven't gotten anything that either was my asking price or very darn close to it. Yeah, because, well, I think realtors are definitely worth their weight in gold. Yeah, I said it. Okay, so anyhow, let me give you some more reasons why. I think you need to use a a realtor. You know, once your property is under contract, the multiple listing service status is going to change. In other words, um, the multiple listing service, they they track whether or not your property is active on the market, whether it's uh, in an option period, uh, whatever. Okay. And that history is part of the property listing record. So let's say you decide that, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to meet these, these buyer's demands. I don't want to replace that faulty electrical panel. I don't want to, I don't want to do the roof repairs because of the hail damage. I don't want to do any of it. Okay. Well, here's, here's the problem with doing that. You're rejecting their offer and you're going to go back onto the market. So the status on your property is going to change back to active. Now this status change can make buyers and their agents wonder why that property went back on the market and can result in lower offers that come in. And if this happens more than once, you can be certain there will be questions about the condition of the property, further reducing both showings and offers. Yeah, I I consider it to shooting yourself in the foot. Now, the days on market in the multiple listing service also affects offers. The longer the days on market, the lower the offer price tends to be. Yeah. I mean, I know people that specifically don't look at anything for sale unless it has been on the market for at least 45 days, because what their thought process is, is this, maybe they're desperate. Maybe they're trying to dispose of the property. Maybe they're not getting any offers or anything like that. And they will tend to come in and they will make lowball offers. Now, these are not Lifestyles Unlimited members that I'm talking about. These are just other people that I know that's their strategy. I don't like their strategy, but that's their strategy. So as the days on market increases, your realtor will encourage you to lower your selling price. This can stimulate a new round of showings and offers, but they are almost always lower than that initial offer you received. And remember, time is money. The holding costs represent a dollar for dollar reduction in your profit. You are paying mortgage interest, insurance, utilities, yard maintenance, property taxes. Every day you hold the property while it's vacant because it's not providing you any rental income. Remember, the buyer is the only one that can legally terminate the contract and they must do so during the option period. If you cannot come to terms with the buyer on repairs and the buyer decides to exercise their option to terminate the contract, it may be a while before you get another offer. And depending on market conditions, your property may look tainted and showings will slow down or even come to a halt. Now, can you see why you need to do your best to make that first offer work? So let me, let me tell you what, what I would do, um, what I have done. And, and specifically, I'll just, I'll just relate to the three properties I just recently put on the market 
following this strategy received offers at list price. Okay. One of them wasn't at list price. It was a little bit below list price, but it was a great offer. So I took it. Um, here's what I would do. I would, I would replace the, the faulty electrical panel. I would install a new roof and in doing so, I would make an insurance claim. That's part of the reason I pay insurance on that property so that the buyer is going to get a brand new roof and it's only going to cost me what the deductible was for my insurance premium. Yeah. So, you know, roof might be $10,000, but because my deductible is only 500 bucks, guess how much I pay? You got it. 500 bucks. I would also negotiate the other items off the list through the realtor. I mean, to be honest with you, like a, a, a hot water pan, you know, d- does it need to be replaced? What does that cost? It's not that expensive. Maybe I, maybe I eat that. Maybe I say, you know what? I'll take care of the big stuff. If you'll do the little stuff, you know, it's, we're just negotiating. We haven't said no to anything. And this, in my opinion, is a very reasonable approach. And based on the experience that I have based on the experience provided to me by the mentors that I utilize, it's a very common outcome. You are not giving into everything the buyer requested. Instead, you are focused on those items that every buyer will request. So it is better to repair or replace those items now and close with the current buyer. So when selling a property, making that first offer work is fundamental to maximizing your profit. Before you put your property up for sale, make sure you have a solid plan to make that first offer work on the property sale. Make sure your property is ready for sale. Repair or replace items that will come up on an inspection report and be of concern to all buyers. Now, to the properties that I sold, they actually had hail damage on it. Before I put those properties on the market, I worked with my insurance company. I put brand new roofs on that property, which by the way, made them even more attractive in the marketplace. And I was able to get more money for them because they had brand new roofs on them. Another thing you should do is offer your property at the right price for the sub market and the current property condition. You should consider working with a highly qualified realtor. This will help you keep your emotions in check and adds an experienced negotiator to your team. Focus on your main objective, getting the property sold at top dollar and moving on to the next deal is the way to go and be prepared to negotiate with your buyer on items you may have missed that will be of concern to all buyers. Now, keep in mind, no two situations are the same, but these guidelines that I've presented to you will help you maximize your profits when selling your own home or an investment property. And whether this is your first deal or your 51st deal, I'm going to encourage you to use an experienced realtor to negotiate on your behalf and to shepherd your deal to a quick and profitable close. Yeah, that's, that's what I've got to say. I mean, that's, that's it in a nutshell, folks. Um, I think the market is great. That's part of the reason that I'm, I'm selling some of my properties. Uh, I've got three of them that I sold. I sold them very quickly. They're all in escrow. Um, we're actually part of our strategy is we're doing a 1031 exchange. We're going to pull the money out of those properties and we're going to put them into something else and defer the taxes. Really, really cool way to do business. And I'll tell you what, if you want to learn more about how we do business at Life Styles Unlimited, go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. That's freeworkshoplivestream.com and get yourself registered for an upcoming workshop. And remember, it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.